not the artist and the musician, the sculptor and the pianist love food. How about we listen to some music first? Theme from the Endless Summer by the Sandals. This was chosen by Chris because he answered me earlier than you. <laughs> you already had three, three songs. I did just my friends, <laughs> only like a few days ago. Yeah, but normally we let the host to choose the music. Last time I have chosen the music for you and then and, and the other guests. But you have to listen to it and tell us what you think because the next question on air is going to be um, about how do you like the music and his choices and what is your favorite music to listen while you're off your classical stuff. <laughs> okay. Do you recognize the song? Not yet. <laughs> It's a classic, classic. Easy listening, it's the guitar, good vibes. It's an old surfer. Yeah. The sandals, are they Californian? Sounds very Californian. Sure. I've heard the song, but I don't know anything about them. What movie was it then? The Endless Summer. So there's two Endless Summers. The original one was 1963. They even came to New Zealand. It's a, it's about following the sun. So oh. in the endless summer road trip. So just going in one direction around the world. I love that. Year, and just catching waves everywhere they went. They are. Yeah. Yeah, the sound is very California. It's kind of a easy but busy. Good road trip song. If I will have to follow a season, it probably will be spring. The summer is okay. too relaxing. Yeah. I need, I need to see the kind of a burst of the nature. And it's funny too because not always the best waves are in summer. And it's kind of a bit contradictory. Yeah. I mean, the best waves are usually in winter. But anyway, it was made for a fun film. There's two films. So you love it, you love it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bodyboarder myself, but uh, yeah, definitely connected to the ocean. Are you yeah. the same? Uh, not that good of a bodyboarder or surfer, but I like giving no. it a go. Yeah, yeah. waves in Utah. <laughs> no, is there ocean in Utah? No. <laughs> Salty lake. <laughs> yeah. It was the Olympics there once. Oh, Mountain winter, winter, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 Welcome back to the studio of Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. It is Olina Williams' work for and our guests, Chris Wells and Mercy Jones, the artist and the musician who love food. Hello, guys. Hi. Hello. We just listened to very relaxing, good music. And my first question is actually to Warwick. Normally, when we create a playlist, and he doesn't know who guests are, he tries to guess um, who is our guest, like a portraiture by music choices. And then I wonder, did he guess Chris' choice very well? Does Chris actually look like a person who would choose Endless Summer? Yeah, yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very cool looking guy. <laughs> yes, yeah. very, he looked like a surf, although he said that he's a bodyboarder yeah. himself. <laughs> so, um, it's nice to hear, just to, to have you back, because each of you came before Chris about a year and a half, and Mercy before her previous concert here in New Plymouth. It was a pleasure to have you. You're so talented, of course. So, um, Mercy, you didn't give us any choice of music this time. Maybe this is your time lucky. So what do you think of Chris's choice? I liked it. It was nice and chill. Yeah, like a good chill song. So what sort of music do you normally listen when you're not onto your classical piano stuff? Well, I listen to a bit of a variety. When I'm studying, I like to listen to instrumental music. Um, but before I do big races or go for a run, I like to listen to kind of old songs that are catchy and will keep me upbeat. We like this one the most because we are alternative music radio station. <laughs> and we can sometimes listen to some really old music, sometimes very forgotten music or music that wouldn't be on air otherwise it is on the most. So yeah, we like that. So you're only 16 and you're playing concerto with New Plymouth Orchestra. It's Mendelssohn concerto, right? Yes. Tell us about it. Yes, yeah, so it's a full concerto, about 25 minutes, and I play the piano and the orchestra plays an accompaniment with it. And it's a really happy and lively song. 
Oh, awesome. I love Mendelssohn. It's um, celebratory because it's famous march and Mendelssohn is used in um, the weddings all over the world, probably the most uh, well-used piece of classical music. My wedding. <laughs> Use that. Yeah, yeah Mendelssohn. Yeah. In Russia, we always play March of Mendelssohn at the end of the ceremony. Somehow it's considered the appropriate thing to do. Um, and each composer has their own vibe as well. Like, for example, I don't know, Strauss is always so festive. It's always like a ball when you listen to the Strauss. But Hoving is so intellectual and beautifully composed. And, um, there are so many things. What is your favorite music? Oh, favorite classical music? Yeah. Oh, that's a hard choice. <laughs> At the moment, probably Mendelssohn. I usually just love whatever I'm playing in the moment. Then you'll hate him after it's all finished. It's six, <laughs> six, years of, six hours per day of Mendelssohn. He'll probably be tired. Oh, well, I hope he loves you back. <laughs> all right. So, um, Chris. Hello. I did a little search online about him. <laughs> and I found many Chris as well. Who were artists? Mm -hmm. um, there is someone who does colored sketches, and it's quite a gloom and doom sketches. There are some people who do post-apocalyptic portraiture, almost like a steampunk type. There are some people. There is a lady whose name is Chris Wells, who is doing a very realistic-looking uh, landscapes. And um, there was some. Um, art curators, art directors, and things like that. It's almost like if you want to be an artist, take a name of Chris Wells, and the name will sprinkle the magic <laughs> of art on top of you. Chris, how do, what do you think about it? About everyone having the same name as me? Yeah, oh, all the artists. I mean, you can't do much about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a race to who gets uh, famous first. If one of the Chris Wellses do well, we all do well. <laughs> yeah, so, go, should go make, everyone. Should make a video of Chris Wells. My surname is Williams, and I've recently discovered a Williams Foundation. And what do they do? They do grants for people whose surname is Williams. <laughs> it, it is a bit too late for me, but I should have known it a bit earlier. <laughs> but maybe Chris Wells Arts Foundation is somewhere on the horizon. <laughs> so you said that you sold some of your sculptures. To no, 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 no. Um, the sculptures I'm doing at the moment, they're a bit of a hard sell. Like uh, it's not something you sort of see every day. And uh, at the moment, all the sculptures I've done are out at Kuru on Kuru Gallery. Which is on Kuru Road out towards Alkura. Oh, and they're all, um, well, they're based on a, a trip that I went to Easter Island uh, about well, four or five years ago now, and just based on the sort of head sculptures within the landscape. Mm -hmm. So I sort of took that notion and used the local tree that we have, kind of the same notion as rock to tree, and carved the, the ponga and mm -hmm. the stumps. And uh, what originally what I wanted to do was just carve them where they were and not have to move them at all oh. but um having talked to the council and parks uh they're, they're quite sensitive about you touching trees and in, in public and uh I've especially had to, if they're alive they're connected to them. <laughs> no i always I always carve the dead ones oh, right. so all the tops have fallen off uh they're just left with the sort of stump and a little bit of the top you just chop the top off and then carve the bottom and if you can leave them in the landscape, it's sort of that's where they naturally lie, so it suits it, it looks perfect. Wow. Um, so I've had to deal with moving them into galleries, moving them in my car when they're heavy, bloody mm. things. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's been an experience, but I'm, I'm happy where they are at the moment. They're overlooking the mountain and uh, to Kurupa over by Oakura, so they're in a good spot. So. Yeah. yeah, your art is amazingly connected to nature. So, mm. um, the um, lines are very natural. Yeah, material yep. is natural. It's almost like are you lo looking at a living thing? Yeah, you, you can't really force too much depth in a in a poem. Like it's hollow in the middle, so you have to just use the lines that it has already. And and uh, the times that I've tried to get a little bit more intricate with things it, it, it goes wrong so uh i've had to uh, backtrack and you know they, they chip pretty easily too so you brought yeah. a book which is called bush haircuts yeah yeah <laughs> that, that's how it started out i was I, I i i've done a lot of gallery work in the past and i wanted to do something with the nature sort of inspired by andy goldsworthy and a few other mm -hmm. artists like that they work in nature and you know, I started playing around in uh, bushscapes and uh, cleaning things up and 
using found objects and making things with them and and then eventually uh, got into carving and uh, yeah here I am six years later still doing it and yeah it's been a quite a journey I think you're a little modest um, <laughs> very pictures of your I mean, these are old ones too these are these are from three four years ago they are yeah. they are quite intricate I can see what you mean about Kind of letting you down in terms of being able to smash into it but mm. um, the question is do you always paint them I, I have so far yeah it's just sort of become a trademark uh, I started out just leaving them natural but I also work with a bit of digital um, photography as well so I've been putting them through Photoshop programs and having a bit of fun with mirroring them and you know syncing them and stretching them and it's sort of like they've become templates for future works as well. And I know you've just talked about the setting of where they are, but does that become part of the artwork as well? Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. 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 And that, that's why I would just love to uh, carve them where they are. But mm. so far, the council is not budging. So <laughs> I absolutely love how bright they are. <laughs> I love colour. And that, for me, it's uh, it's kind of a representation of your personality as well. Yeah. So there is a little bit kitsch in it, and yeah. there is a connection to the nature. So it's a combination of you and what happened before and what probably will go further in the future. Mm. So yeah, yeah. I think it's a perfect time to listen to our second song, which is a Superman by Goldfinger. How's it going for everyone? Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Too much to have a glass of liqueur? Yeah, yeah, why not? What should I talk about at first? Um, no, we can, we can, fil we can film it, we can try it and talk sure. about it. Yeah, yeah. 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 please do. Right please now? Do it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Oli is not allowed alcohol, but he can have uh, a little bit of the... Alcohol, um, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. So this is where I'm staying at the moment. Uh, it's called Kahu Glen, so it's an organic fragile farm. So it's mixed well, with fragile. It? It it's old? out towards Bell Block, so oh. it's on Parati Road. There's a Christmas tree shop uh, called Santa's Choice, and then it's just up the road a bit okay. So for the kiddies, young don't, adults. Don't, don't young call adults. them kiddies because then you'll be um, punished in a in a strange way. Thanks for you, Mercy. Thank you. Yes, Savannah. Nathan can try liqueur and um, work and make and try liqueur later on because we don't have glass, do we? Yeah, you can have this one. <laughs> Which I'll give some. Okay, thank you. Grab a um, tissue as well, please. Okay. And you have to tell us what's in this uh, thing. In this? Oh, these? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job. Try it. Pretty refreshing on a. Uh, the joy is a wonderful aroma. Oh, yeah, no, I it love can, the joy. Yes, it can be uh, in so many different things. Even if, if you mm. cook it, it doesn't evaporate like with a lot of mm. things. So it's 18%. Mm. I'll okay. not want to compromise your glass. <laughs> <laughs> although, although people who go for the food tasting, we share food. Yeah. So we, be, we probably have the same microbiome <laughs> in our group. And uh, none of us. Well, done well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just quite good. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's real subtle mix of both uh, manuka honey and the fajar. Like Time nothing. for, for liqueur was 90s. I believe that people mm -hmm. in the 90s drank a lot of liqueur. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of into the wines and more mm. thing. But maybe the time is to get it yeah. welcome it back. Yeah, but all, a lot more independent growers are uh, producing things like this. And big guys like Coca Cola, and that hopefully you're getting pushed aside and becoming more communal sort of uh, products out there in the community. Yeah, pour it over ice cream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I just got given it about a day ago, and I thought, first I thought, oh, I was wonder what kind of dessert I can make out of this. <laughs> you know, I thought about making something up to that. Because you're so creative. I just, I, I just I did saw it. Your oh. there. Oh, yum. Welcome back to Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. It is us, Alina Williams, work for um, Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. And we have amazing guests today Chris Wells and Mercy Jones, the artist and the musician, the sculptor and the pianist who love food. 
Because guess what? While you were listening to this music piece, we were trying some interesting things. I'll let Chris talk about what he, sort of drinks he brought to us today. So um, at the moment, I'm staying out at an organic Fajoa farm out towards uh, Bell Block on Priority Road. It's called Kahu Glen. Uh, it's an organic Fajoa farm. Uh, they also do a few other things, but Fajoa is mainly. Uh, and I brought in today a fruit juice. It's a Fajoa and apple fruit juice. Uh, the only place that they're selling it at the moment is at the airport out at the, um, at the terminal. So if you're thirsty for a bit of local uh, product, um, help yourself out there. And also I brought in a Fajoa and Manuka honey liqueur, which is made from the seconds of the Fajoas that don't make it to the store. Wow, yeah. this is so tasty, it's so aromatic. Yeah. It's pretty amazing and it reminds me of... Um, Port wine, you know, good quality port wine yeah, from um, yeah. Portugal. Yeah. Which is pretty. Um, aroma of fijo is so overpowering usually, mm. but actually in this case, I can feel a little bit of a crispiness of the apple. Mm. No, not on, is that the? I think the, the, the juice. You got the no. juice or the the liqueur. Liqueur. So that's got just fijo and manuka honey. But it is not too sweet. That's no, I mean. no, it's a good yeah. balance. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought that too, it was going to be too sweet. Now I've got a good future story for you. <laughs> Please tell us. Uh, uh, this is also a massive plug actually. I'm, I'm a trustee on the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust. Has anyone heard of this? No. I did because I know everything about you. <laughs> <laughs> so we, what we do is we dish out money to people who want to travel overseas for research. And it's, it's often not academic type researchers normal people just furthering themselves oh, cool. and the trust was set up in the 60s when Winston Churchill passed away uh, this is a bit of a story that I'm sort of spinning a bit but the basic facts are true is that his son said what do you want as your legacy would you like another statue and he said no actually I'd like some sort of trust where people can benefit from my legacy through learning so that's that's how it was developed and it's in the, it exists in the UK and Australia and New Zealand so I'm on this trust, and my favourite Winston Churchill scholar is Kate Evans from Raglan, who wrote a book called The Biography of the Fijo. Okay. <laughs> and we gave her wow. a few thousand bucks to travel to South America and find out about the roots of the Fijo and how it ended up here and the story of the Fijo. So that's, that's my cool. Fijo story. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you for sharing this. This is pretty amazing. Um, I, we all know that you do lots of stuff, but uh, probably a lot of things goes at the background and, um, and not, a lot of things not, not get recognized. Like I never heard of the book, which is interesting. Yeah. And it's very relevant to us as well because, well, it's uh, a lot of fake jobs grow in New Zealand. And a lot of products are made of fake jaws. Yeah, so uh, Chris, you also brought some of this. What are, what are those little? Ah, uh, so these are just some um, date truffles. So in these today is peanuts, dates, uh, honey, uh, orange, orange zest, and cocoa. Oh, awesome. So I'll ask um, Nathan and Oli to try them and give us later a review. But I have a first question to Mercy, who tried our second drink, which is an apple and fig jaw juice. What did you think about it? It was so yum. It was a good flavor of fig jaw. In liquid form. Yeah, oh. I loved it. Yes. Um, what sort of drinks do you drink normally when you're in endurance running? Because you're the runner as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I just have water. Although, yeah, kind of energy drinks are nice if it's a really long run, like 6 or 12 hours. And chocolate milk after is always wow. yum. 6 to 12 hours. Uh, I, yes. I don't know, why does she sleep or eat? Do you eat? Do you eat? Yeah, I eat. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. your favorite food? <laughs> for when I'm racing or for in general. When you have time. I mean. <laughs> um, one of my favorite foods is iced animals. Those are really good for when I'm like running around because they're sweet and easy to eat. Oh, the cookies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the kind you have when you're a little kid. <laughs> well, the multicolored ones. Yeah, they have little names. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know, they're a Kiwi icon, you know. No, well, I didn't. It's perhaps not yeah. a Kiwi icon, but I don't know much don't wider know. than that, but it's definitely really well known here in the 70s when I was a kid. So what I want to know is, are they present in Utah? I have no idea. I don't know. I moved in there when I was quite young, so I don't actually remember a whole lot. Your chaperone is shaking your head, so <laughs> <laughs> suggesting that not. But um, yeah, they, they were big in the, in the 70s. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about chaperones, a huge massive thank you to Holly Jones who brought her daughter today in the studio. All we know, all, all of us know that if parents don't put enough efforts and don't drive people, young people around, nothing happens. So thank you, Holly, for being such a devoted mother. For mercy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So um, I know that Chris is a caterer for big exhibitions and launches and art events. Yeah. Um, why, why do you do this? I mean, you have abilities, that's obvious. But yeah. um, apart from the nerve-wracking experience of being an exhibitor, you also choose to cook like 100 yeah. people. Why do you do this? Well, I'm, I'm actually a chef by trade, so it, it's just my way of um, keeping my skills up to speed. And uh, it's my part for the gallery as well, like just to sort of um, enhance the experience. Uh, so, you know, and, and these days I'm not so much working as a chef for a job, but it's um, more for the love of it. And, and I'd like to in little jobs once a month where there's not that much pressure, you know, you've got that one gig to do and that's it, you know, so you can focus, do your best job and then it's done. I don't have to get up the next day and do it again. So. Yeah, don't mind. yeah, not a lot of people will describe an event for 100 people as, as not a lot of pressure, but obviously <laughs> yeah. the chef inside you doesn't mind. Yeah. But, um, um, I mean, all the caterers go through the stages, like something gets into fashion and they all cook it. Yeah. But when I came first to your uh, cooking, I just noticed that you are so refreshingly new and uh, very creative. The, the things that you cooked were different from what I tried at the other events. So okay. Where did you get your inspiration from? Uh, just years of, of practice really <laughs> and, and uh, I've worked a lot overseas. I worked on yachts in Europe for, for years as you know and uh, so I've seen a lot of cuisines and, and picked up a lot of recipes and um, but but the, the hardest part of actually doing those catering gigs is not knowing the kitchen I'm going to. Oh. So I'm turning up to these places and I don't know if I've got space to, you know, create anything or, you know, I've got to bring my own boards with me a lot of the time <laughs> and and yeah, that, that's the hardest, but the cooking's easy. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, like that Toyota show, I mean, I, I was in a kitchen about 50 meters away down the road and then, and it was raining that night and I had to cover it and then send people down the road with the food. And, so that's it's quite a challenge. I did it at PEI, which is no longer here. Yeah. And it was the one on when they were on Devon Street before the restaurant was there. Yeah. We're we're the uh, small responders now. Well. Yeah, so, that's it. Yeah. And before that it was a liquor store. I think so, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, PEI, I think I could be wrong here, I hope no one sues me, but I think they got involved in some scam. Yeah, something went down. <laughs> something went down. We'll just yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually we've done some effective training of, of young people yeah. for a long period. When, when I was there, it was it was pretty ghetto. Like there was only a couple of electric ovens and it wasn't really set up that well. It had the certificates to get, but it was, when, when I got my first job, um, I was just in shock, you know. <laughs> I didn't know That's how to use half the equipment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. speaking about teaching, learning, and education, we'll just do a little plug here for our friends at Wit Kia Mahia. Do your best, be your best. Impressions Restaurant and Garage Cafe Trimester 2 2021. There's a number of nights uh, and lunches that it will be operating. This is where students run the show and you can go along, be a guest, support the students, and also have delicious meals. Um, there's dates all through August, September, October, November, and December, which I'm sure will be on their website and very reasonable prices too. Also, we have a plant-based cooking level three. This is a new course. I'll read the blurb for you. This training scheme is designed to enable cooks on all levels wishing to expand their knowledge and developing food products to cater to the increasing trend for plant-based food. It's $485 Monday, Tuesday evenings and runs from the 16th of August to the 14th of December, and I'm sure that information will also be on the WIT website, which is wit.act.nz. 
Oh, thank you for sharing this. This is amazing. I absolutely love local educators who give new perspectives for young people in life. And um, I have a, a soft spot for people who can cook, as you know. <laughs> so um, I would like to ask our food reviewers to give us a review on um, the food that they tried today. Nathan Griffith, our social media manager and the leader of the group for food reviewers. Um, what are these called? The truffles? The truffles, I yeah. Mean. They're essentially the same as like bliss balls to describe it over the yeah. year. Yeah. And they're covered in coconut, and coconut has become very popular now. They use things like coconuts and dates to sweeten food yeah. now. It's a binder. And um, so there's obviously no sugar in there. No sugar at all. But there's all a ton natural. of fruit and yeah. everything. So it tastes yeah. great. Yeah. Compared with a bliss ball, I think a bliss ball is drier than things. Yeah, yeah. But that's a pretty good description of how the taste. Yeah. Good for you, and they'd be good for your Wonderful. running, actually. Take a couple of those with you, give you a bit of energy. The second reviewer is Oli Foy, aspiring um, artist and our youngest member of the team. Yeah, um, I don't, I like truffles, but this one, <laughs> these <laughs> ones were a lot better than what they usually tasted like. Oh, okay. I don't really like, like the endos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they had a nice sweetness to them, which is why I guess it's like the dates and stuff, but you yeah. can tell they're like really healthy because yeah, yeah they're not yeah they're not too sweet but they've got a nice tang to them and the coconut on the outside gives a really good texture yeah. wonderful this is so comprehensive i'm so impressed with your bliss balls slash truffles yeah. <laughs> and our reviews of them so mercy i heard that you like to bake yes i do <laughs> <laughs> what do you usually bake Oh, just recently I made some peanut butter chocolate oatmeal cookies, which were really yum. I love peanut butter, so whenever there's peanut butter. Yeah. It's a very sporty thing because lots of sportsmen, <laughs> sportsmen like proteins that are in peanut butter, and it is uh, actually um, plant-based proteins. Well said, Lena. Now, peanut butter is a really important, um, brings up a really important subject of matters that can split people in two, for example, <laughs> <laughs> Vegemite or Marmite. <laughs> I have more right. <laughs> Very good, good answer. Pepsi or Coke? I actually don't have either. I'm not sure I've ever had either. She's a, she's a sportsman. She's a sportsman. She's a sportsman. <laughs> Beatles or Rolling Stones? Um, I don't know very much about either one of those either. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Okay, but who are you on I go Rolling Stones. Uh, finally, smooth or crunchy? Oh, crunchy. Yeah. <laughs> and and do you go for your you know your gourmet picks or are you happy with the sanitarium or eater or whatever? Uh Charlie convinced the parents to eat picks when we can, but oh. I'm happy with whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Got smiles, that's good sign. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um when I'm fascinated by something and I'm totally immersed and I don't know, whatever. Um I forget to eat. And it doesn't affect me that much. I don't feel hungry. I actually think that it's a sign of that I do something that I absolutely love. Mm. Do forget to eat when you train. Mm, no, I love eating. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mom, mom Tim who reminds you, ooh, you didn't eat. <laughs> it is your um, crunchy stuff or whatever. <laughs> right, so um, how, how much effort does it involve to prepare for a massive concert that you're going to be in? Yeah, mostly it's just a long time commitment. So I've been learning the piece that I'll be playing for about a year. And so I planned way ahead, chose what piece I wanted, make sure I was going to learn it in time. And then just consistency. So practicing ideally every day and just doing these things over and over. So that when I when it comes to the concert day, I can just relax and have fun and do my best. Wow, this is awesome. I remember my days in music school. They were they were very, very bad days. <laughs> I didn't enjoy them. I, just, I wouldn't say the concert day is the day to enjoy. It was like Aww. lots of stress. That's why I don't play music anymore. But I hope you'll retain your hobby as a hobby or maybe a little side gig venue that you would like to keep doing. Yeah. So, um, Chris, you're a millennial and uh, Mercy is representative of the Z generation. And um, Chris, if you would be your age 16, what would you recommend? If you meet yourself at the age 16, what would you recommend yourself at 16? God, <laughs> this is like 1996. <laughs> wow. Um, what would I recommend to myself then? Do something that you love to do. 
like it, it, it doesn't mean you're going to get paid the most but most people hate going to work you know and at least if there's something about your job you enjoy you know it's, it's better than you know just being a slave sort of thing mm. so yeah stick to it what i originally wanted to be was an animator and when i was at high school and my art teachers put me off they were like oh, really? oh there was nothing here <laughs> For, for animation back in the 90s really and and just after high school finish it pissed me off because that's when the sorry to swear but the um digital started age started to come like yeah. the toy stories and the all of those uh movies came out and i was just like geez man no, that could have been a career but anyway the food industry was well for me so. um i just got a message of 19 years old chris wells to you uh, the message was, it's not too late now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my question to uh, Mercy. So if you meet yourself in your series now, so what question would you ask yourself? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I would ask, hmm, what's one thing that's, I've been interested to know what's changed from my plan at the moment. So I'm just trying to make plans for when I leave high school and stuff. So I'm sure there'll be heaps of things that have changed from my plan. So I'll be interested to, yeah, see what happens there. Wow, that's amazing because it shows that you're planning and it shows that, <laughs> that you have A plan and B plan. <laughs> because uh, this is a wonderful, you are such an amazing role model for people of your generation. You are um, showing how to achieve by using determination and hard work. So well done, Mercy. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So um, I think it's a perfect time to listen to a third piece of music, Summertime in Aotearoa by Corella. This is such an interesting show. Wow. Thank you very much for all your input. You know, this is a wise advice. Wise advice. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go to school, Chris? Boys High. Oh, yeah. 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 So you, did you have old John? Uh, John Teller and Neil Groom. Oh, yeah. And, it's still um, on air. Murray Gilson. No, I mean, no. I'm there. We're still. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, John's. We respect John. John. John's a good. He's a good guy. I was still uh, see him every now and again. Yeah. Um, but it was just that was the art curriculum back then. Like you, you painted what you saw in front of you, and and that's what you did. You know, you paint portraits, paint mountains, and doing cartoons. What are you? Yeah. What are you thinking? <laughs> and, um, and, like, John was very influential on my other son. Um, he's the boy and fish and chips, eh? Or chips, anyway. And, oh yeah, um, he's now doing creative media production, including animation. Oh, classic! So, yeah, so <laughs> can't be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just the timing. Eh? He was very crafty back then, though. He was hands-on, sort of yeah. sculpture and things like that. And, uh, um, I got a story about John. Actually, um, I had a good friend. Did, did you know Tim Chadwick? He was a reasonably well-known artist and art teacher in Lingwood High School. Yeah, familiar, eh? yeah. Yeah, he had a lot of, you'd, you'd recognize his art, but he yeah. was killed in a car accident um, okay. in 2010. And so we only had one art teacher in Lingwood. Yeah. So John was loaned to us by um, by Boys High. Mm -hmm. He was sort of in senior retirement, I think, but he came out to school and just helped us out. Oh, cool. That's that was great. Awesome, yeah. 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 A good teacher means so much. A good teacher can just totally shape the path. Um, yeah. Do you have good teachers? I do, yeah. yeah. Well, do you uh, practice music with mom or do you have another music teacher? Mom helps me a lot and I also take some lessons online. Mm. Online? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I uh, Do you hear well online because music gets distorted and there's yeah. a little bit of a delay? Yes, you can hear okay, but it definitely helps to have mom there to hear it better. Is that Tikuro or some other? No, I take from a uh, teacher back in the States who I used to take oh, with. Yeah. Did you ever have um, Noreen Dixon as a teacher? She te she taught me double bass at school. Oh, cool. So not piano, she doesn't play piano yeah. as our main instrument. But she taught me double bass yeah. at school. Oh, Noreen is great. She, she teaches my yeah. son, Marlon. Oh, does she? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, she does cool art as well. She yeah, she's amazing yeah. pastel uh, artist these days. <laughs> yeah. Full so time. So cool. Yeah. In her little studio, she makes like an exhibition of her art on the walls. So you can see how she evolves in the, as the artist because oh, she changes cool. them all the time. Yeah. 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 So show Chris your art. Yes, please. <laughs> Yeah, this, his art um, is uh, shown on the cell phones of influential people like me. 
and Nathan also has a um, Kava telephone Kava. Yeah, and also, um, TV celebrity asked me uh, why did I get that, and I gave him um, all his details. So she'll probably have the inspiration, like the things you got. Do you make them up, or you like? Mm -hmm. Inspired by other apples. Yes, I'm sorry. I had wondered because it's so. Diverse. I don't know, shouldn't shouldn't use this word, but messy because I'm kind of a messy person within inside. For me to organize Hardly. something is really is really hard, and this is this is organized and this is a mess. I've created my so this represents me so well. <laughs> okay. So we're going to wrap up soon. I'm going to read the uh, the announcement for our sponsor. Do you have any other news to share? Got it, got it, got it, yeah. I can tell them when the concert is I'm playing. Welcome back to Taranaki Fujis with Area 41, the tastiest food show on the Most FM. This us, Alina Williams, work for, and we have amazing, very interesting, full of content uh, guests today, Chris Wells and Mercy Jones, the artist and the musician who both love food. So, last message from our guests, what sort of events you're involved in and what's happening in your life right now? Cool, yeah, I'm getting ready for the Mercy Plays Mendelssohn concert with Taranaki Symphony Orchestra, which is on August 14th at the show place here in town and you can buy tickets on Ticket Deck online. Nice. Awesome. I, I'm, I'm definitely coming because uh, my son really loves classical music. I love classical music, so I'm taking selfies with you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. yeah. What about you, Chris? Uh, at the moment, uh, I've just got back into my sculpture, actually. So I've, I've just... Um, I gave it up for a few months after my last project and, and then I got gifted another Ponga um, a couple of weeks ago and uh, yeah, getting back in the tools and, and uh, carving out at the Fajawa farm at the moment. So uh, you'll probably see one of my works at uh, Koru on Devon Gallery in the coming few months. Looking forward to it so much. Yeah. And please send us invite and we will come to support course, you. Yeah. A few words from our sponsor, Area 41 on Broome Street. The perfect place to get away for coffee, meals, meetings and events. Area 41 is an Italian restaurant, cafe and bar, with a passion for traditional Italian meals with a twist. They offer a variety of breakfast, pizzas, pastas, risottos, Italian men's and decad decadent desserts. The dessert menu is the best, believe me, I try them all, as well as the set menus and platters for any occasion. Open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, seven days a week. And all their meals can be also ordered as a takeaway. Thank you for listening for Taranaki Foodies with Area 41. Now we're going to take some selfies and post them on Instagram and Facebook. Tune in to 100.4 FM every Saturday at 4 p.m. Remember, there is a live concert there is a live recording of this interview online on Taranaki Fujis with Area 41 group page on Facebook, also one on YouTube and Twitter. Meet you next Saturday at 4 p.m. on Airwaves. Bye-bye, my boomerangians. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. See you. Awesome. This was so interesting. How, how was it for you, Percy? Good. Yeah. <laughs>